EABIC Four Point Agenda The Four Point Repatriation Agenda to be discussed and implemented by or before August 1, 1996 97, thus fulfilling the Emancipation Charter of 1834 and 183, when all these rights should have been given to us. 1. Representation to the UN. 2. Representation to the International Court of Justice. 3. Representation to the OAU. 4. Representation to Queen Elizabeth II to assist with transportation and compensation. Action is envisaged through the following agents slash agencies. 1. The United United Nations the government of Jamaica is been asked to put the matter on the agenda of the General Assembly with reference to Article 1 to 13 of the United Nations Charter, as the Governor General himself said in a letter to the EABIC, question of representation and compensation must be discussed at a global level, the matter has already been raised at that level but needs to be championed by a member government and support lobbied among like-minded member nations. The government of Jamaica should be the member state to champion the cause. If every member nation of the United Nations would contribute one ship or whatever it can muster towards provision of such ship, the burden of cost would be shared and the burden of guilt by the white world would be eased. We are asking the government of Jamaica to instruct its representative to the United Nations to lobby for this effort. 2. The International Court of Justice Our cause has been referred to the ICJ, which while it did not rule out the possibility of hearing the case, required sponsorship of a member state of the United Nations before entertaining our cause. We are calling on the government of Jamaica as a recognized government and member state of the United Nations to sponsor our international human right cause of fundamental freedom, redemption and repatriation before the International Court of Justice The Hague. 3. The Organization of African Unity Letter dated November 8, 1993, the Congress referred the matter to H. E. Salim Salim, the Secretary General of the OAU who is well aware of our proposed agenda, again however, the matter needs to be championed by a recognized government in order to achieve implementation. The government of Jamaica as an observer to the OAU should call upon a member state such as Ghana to push the case before the OAU. The President of Ghana, Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings, speaking before some 36 heads of state at the OAU. He was quoted as saying we should find a way to include all the sons and daughters of Africa in building and moving our societies forward. In this respect I would suppose that the OAU should consider granting observer status to representative groups of black Africans in the diaspora. President Rawlings further called for the OAU Secretary General to work out arrangements to open a way for them to make contributions to our common effort. Accordingly a specific request should be made to Jamaica's observer representative to the OAU for observer status to be granted to the E.A.B.I.C in the OAU. Now that South Africa has a new black majority government and is likely to assume membership in the Organization of Africa Unity, it too can be called on to support the cause. 4. Queen Elizabeth II The government of Jamaica should make representation to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to assist with transportation and compensation. The British monarch has a responsibility to redeem and compensate the descendants of the black Africans who were sent into slavery by her forebears. Holy Emmanuel I. Selassie I. Jarastafari.